Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello and welcome, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope your day is going well. I hope your week has gone well, frankly. I hope that you have had time to spend with God each and every day privately. But then I pray that you have had times this week to rub shoulders with others who know Christ to strengthen you and with those that don't know Christ to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to get right to that issue today as we come to the book of Titus, Titus in chapter 3. If you can, reach over and get your Bible and join me there. Titus chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 will be our focus. I've got a gospel tract I want to encourage you to get from us. We are into some really practical stuff today, and I want to lead into our study this way. Here's my question for you. What makes for a healthy local church? A healthy local church? Well, honestly, the answer to the question, you really don't need a Bible college degree, nor do you need the brains of a rocket scientist. Let me make my point by changing my question to this. If I were to ask you what makes for a healthy marriage? Well, you could answer that. Healthy marriages are the result of a man and a woman being mature and prepared to be married, and then these two people need to be living out their marriage vows with carefulness and single-heartedness. You do that, you're going to have a healthy marriage. Well, here in the book of Titus, so far, we've seen that a healthy church takes two mature kinds of people. Chapter 1 told us it needs a healthy leaders or pastors. And chapter 2, we're told that the local church needs healthy lay people. But here in chapter 3, we are seeing that a healthy church needs to not only help have healthy leaders and people, but these folk need to be living out their salvation decision with carefulness and single-heartedness. It really is that simple. Today, we're going to see why. Because here as we come to verse 8 and 9, we're going to find that all of us are living a cross-cultural life. I want to explain that and show you how careful we must be living our lives for Christ. So if you can, get your Bible, Titus, please, chapter 3, and also get something on which you can jot some notes. Well, I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago, and friend, a gospel tract is simply a short printed presentation of God's plan of how a sinner, a hell-bound sinner, a person living for themselves, for their own pleasure, can be transformed by the saving grace of Christ. They can have the sin stain removed because they receive Jesus Christ as Savior. The word gospel means good news. This gospel tract in my hand does what all of our gospel tracts do. They tell the good news of Jesus Christ. The gospel tract in my hand right now is entitled The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. Now, this gospel tract not only shares the gospel with a person that does not know Christ, it also lays out the vitalness of every believer living their life for Christ. This gospel tract talks about wasted time, wasted talents, and wasted treasure, and ends up with just a clear presentation of the gospel. This gospel tract would be great for even God's people to read and be challenged by it. Now, friend, this gospel tract, The Tragedy of a Wasted Life, is just one of the 41 tracts is in a sample packet I want to give to you. Please have pen and paper ready because at the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give you ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. And when you do that, 
Give those things to us. We'll send you free of charge that sample packet so that you and I can become partners. Once you get the sample packet, look at the tracks. You're going to find key ones there that really ring the bell in your life. Then call us and say, give me more of those. Email us. Say, give me more of these particular three or four or whatever. We want to be a partner with you in the gospel. Oh, please. If you can't stay to the end, just go to our website. Our web address is Bible Tracks. Inc.org. That word tracks is spelled T R A C T S, Bible Tracks Inc.org. If your Bible's open there in front of you, then go with me, please, and look at verses 8 to 9 of Titus chapter 3. Here's what they say This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. When you and I speak about living cross-culturally, normally, you and I think of a missionary, a person who goes by the call of God, and they leave their birth country and go to a, a country to share the gospel, a, a country that's very different in its language, dress, and so on. But even business people need to think cross-culturally if they have a product, or oh, let's say the product was designed in the United States of America, but they want to sell it in the country of China or whatever. Well, how that company is going to promote that product will be different in China than it will be in the United States. They need to think cross-culturally. But here in verses 8 and 9, these are two verses that are very, very practical in their teaching and advice to us. Titus is told what to do because the believers there in the local churches were going to be living among people that are spiritually unsaved, and these unsaved people are sometimes hostile to God's people. I love the way verse 8 begins. Verse 8 begins this way. This is a faithful saying. This is a faithful saying, and it goes on to talk about the, some these words here, these words that referring to this faithful saying refer back to what's said there in verses 3 through 7. In verses 3 through 7, it's a bold, clear gospel message. That message is faithful. It's trustworthy. You can depend upon it. You can take it to the bank, so to speak. Implied here is that if this gospel message, which had worked in the lives of believers that are in the church, if it's taken to the lost outside the church, it'll work there too in their lives. Here are two words, both beginning with the letter A, like in the word apple, that help us deal with verses 8 and 9. These two words are this. For verse 8, my word is affirm, affirm. For verse 9, the word is avoid. Now, after telling us that the gospel is trustworthy or faithful in verse 8, Paul then tells Titus to teach these gospel words. The word affirm here is the idea of doing this teaching with emphasis. Do it emphatically. Teach these truths from verses 3 to 7 with passion and do it with clarity. Then he says to urge the people to take on a life pattern of good works. Do these good works to everyone because they're profitable for everyone, for the totality of the world of people. Now, just in case you missed my four-point outline from verse 8, here it is in my key words beginning with the letter T. Number one, there's a trustworthy gospel. Number two, teach it emphatically. Number three, take on a life of good works. And number four, the totality of people will be benefited by us living a life of good works. Now, that's what Titus was to affirm out of verse 8. Then the Apostle Paul, in writing his letter, the Spirit of God moving him, this is God's word. Now in verse 9, Titus is told to avoid some things uh, and to teach believers to avoid some things. When God's people are out in the world and we get into spiritual conversations, beloved, we've got to be careful. Lost people, oh, they love to talk about things that they call spiritual things. 
What they don't want to talk about is the gospel and the, the exclusive savior role of Jesus Christ. They want to talk about things that help them feel, and I've got that word in quotes, feel spiritual, but they, these conversations and these things do not draw us to any kind of helpful point for eternity. These are unprofitable conversations and unprofitable issues. One of these kind of issues was prevalent years ago. The, the, the question was this, where did Cain get his wife? Where did Cain get his wife? Oh, people like to bring that up. It sounds so spiritual. Another one was this, when I was in high school and so on, heart transplants were beginning. And here was the question. If a person who is a sinner gets a heart transplant from the body of a person who is a believer in Jesus, is that sinner now saved? (laughs) In studying for this broadcast, I came across this controversy, which was brewing and being debated by the Jews in Paul's day. Are you ready for this one? Here it is. Should a Jew eat an egg, an egg laid by chicken, should a Jew eat an egg that was laid on a holy day? Oh, friend, how utterly foolish all these questions are and others like them. They are foolish questions because even if you could answer them dogmatically, what good have they done for you? Are you any closer to having peace with God through them? Have you removed one single sin stain from your soul? In referring to wealth and gaining wealth, Jesus said this, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? May I borrow that and make give it a twist to help make my similar point here? What will it profit a person if they gain all the answers to all the world's questions that are out there, yet his soul is still lost before a holy God? Believers live cross-cultural lives. We live among people who are lost in sin. Their souls are lost to God. They are on their way to hell. The answers to their lostness is in the person of Jesus Christ and what Christ alone accomplished to save us from our sin. We believers need to live lives that, number one, affirm the gospel. We affirm it verbally, but then we affirm it with our actions, doing good to all men that will open the door to conversations about Jesus the Christ. But then we avoid those things which distract us from Jesus and all he has accomplished. Friend, one of the greatest gospel tellers I ever met was a man who was slow mentally. And when people tried to sidetrack him, he knew he couldn't answer their questions. And when somebody asked him a twisted question, he would say, you know, I don't know that. I'll go find an answer, but let me come back and talk to you about Jesus. He never let people get him distracted from focusing on Christ, who Christ was, what Christ accomplished at the cross, how Christ arose from the dead. Friend, Are you looking for answers to strange spiritual questions? And are you afraid just to come and boldly deal with Christ? Deal with Jesus. He's the only Savior you're ever going to be offered from heaven. Only He can give you eternal life. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.